Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Business Spotlight. I'm your host, Todd Rodden. I'm a certified business and executive coach. I own Aspire Action Coach uh, based here in the sunny Dayton, Ohio area. Uh, we're thrilled to have you join us. Uh, if you're first time viewers, uh, we encourage you to hit that subscribe button uh, so you can receive future messages on top of the great message you're going to receive today from our guest, who is Deanne Fisher. Uh, Deanne is the president and owner of the Sanderson Insurance Group, which is an independent insurance agency based here also in the Dayton, Ohio area. I think you're going to love her story as a third generation owner, uh, somebody who's kind of grew up in the business uh, and has kind of taken it to, to new levels as well. So uh, Deanne, uh, take a minute, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about Sanderson and how you got started in insurance. Yeah, so um, thanks for having me. I really appreciate being able to come on and I guess kind of share a little bit about us. Um, I, as you mentioned, have been in insurance for what seems like a really long time. Sanderson Insurance has uh, been around since 1957. So my granddad started it out of his garage, going from door to door, selling auto policies and home policies, and eventually built our first uh, building in Fairborn, Ohio, and was there for, I think, about 30 years um, before we kind of just really started expanding and growing. Uh, my dad took over the business, I'm not quite sure of the year, sometime in the early 80s, and he was there for a really long time. And I took over as owner in 2014, but I started an agency in 1998. After I got out of high school, I started filing some papers, helping out around the office while I was going to college because um, I did not want to work in insurance. I was going to do something else. And here I am 26 years later. So, <laughs> so maybe, maybe take a second and share what you love about what. What helped transform you from, hey, I don't want to do this to it's, it's now your fashion, right? Yeah, so I just, I, I think that once I got into it, um, you know, there's a couple of, of different aspects. I, I always say I don't really like insurance, for one. You know, we don't really have any control over it. We can't set our own pricing. We can't, you know, make our own rules. You know, we always have to answer to somebody but I just really um, developed a passion for working with our clients. And, you know, I, some of these clients that I work with today who really have become friends, I've worked with them for 26 years. We really have a longevity with our clients. Um, we keep an over 90% ratio of retention. Um, so, you know, just building that relationship, making sure personally that not only are they protected, but we have a lot of business owners making sure that they're educated and what it is that they need to have to protect their businesses that they work so hard for. So I really just like that um, education aspect of it, educating our clients and just making sure that they're taken care of. And once I got in the business, I really, um, I, well, I was actually going for nursing. So I think I just kind of switched kind of that care of, you know, to clients from more of like a, a nursing standpoint. So, um, but I just really enjoyed it. And, you know, everybody needs insurance. So um, here we are. <laughs> so maybe let's, let's build on that. So, uh, you know, what do you think uh, makes you stand out? It's uh, separates Sanderson and it makes you unique. Uh, you talked to, you shared a very, very impressive retention rate. So how are you able to, to make that happen? I think one of the things, like even when we have our team meetings, one of the things I really impress on everybody, um, insurance kind of gets a bad name sometimes, you know, the insurance salesman, and they just want to sell you the policy and move on. And, you know, they're all about commission. And when we get together, you know, it's not about the sale. If we don't make the sale, that's fine. Like we're going to educate them. We're going to let them know what they need. We're going to make sure they're taken care of. And in the long run, if they don't choose us, that's okay. That's, you know, that's not what we're after. Um, current clients or new clients, we kind of approach the whole, our office, we approach the industry as more of a servicing versus a sales aspect. So it really comes off as we care because we do. So, you know, our clients know that what we're educating them on or talking to them about, um, and they trust us with what we're you know, recommending to them. So it just builds more of a relationship between us and the client. And, you know, 
um, that's what that's why they stay because they've built that trust in us to make sure that they're taken care of. And then um, we get referrals on the back end of that. You know, when they have a family or friend who is looking for somebody, um, by far and large, that's our largest source of marketing. Okay. Uh, 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 very common there. So how do you how do you nurture and encourage those types of referrals? Um, we really don't have to incur, we don't really have to do a whole lot. I mean, we, we will, we'll run like, you know, some giveaways here and there, you know, if you send a referral where we love the Dayton Dragons, which is the local minor league team here. So we often give away like family nights to the Dragons games, or we'll give away some gift cards, gift certificates. We like to promote our clients. So if we have businesses, we'll try to do like a cross promotion um, for referrals, we'll give away gift certificates or gift cards to their businesses. So it kind of puts them out there as well. Um, but, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to push it really hard. You know, we, we get those because our customers trust us and they know we're going to take care of them. And so they're eager to uh, pass our name along. So uh, uh, great when you can build that uh, kind of a natural referral engine uh, to grow your, your business, right? And then yes. the reputation uh, has to be you know, paramount for that. So, you know, other Fair other much. marketing strategies that, that you place focus on that you found to be, you know, you know to generate the most fruit for you? Um, probably secondly would be just, you know, networking, getting out there. We're involved in the community. We, um try to promote you know we're always sponsoring youth sports school sports wherever we can get involved in fundraising different things like that so we try to put ourselves out there in those types of areas as well and then of course in return you know people end up hearing about us okay okay so those traditional manners so so 25 years ish in now so I'm sure you've seen a few twists and turns in the road uh right a few mountains so yes. <laughs> climb as well. So as you look back, what's been the biggest roadblock or two that you, you had to overcome? And you know, what did you learn through those? <sighs> really, probably, I don't know if we've had roadblocks. I don't do roadblocks, so, but obstacles. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> you, you know, I have a sign in my office that says everything is figure outable. So we're going to usually try to find some way um, around it. But by far the largest, I guess, obstacle that I've gone through is probably more recently. Um, I mean, there's several over the years, obviously, but we've really hit a point where we're trying to grow and expand our footprint. So that's a completely different business model. So going from just a small local agency to trying to have multiple locations, um, that's really been a hurdle because again you know you really have to have a different kind of setup for that so that's where we've been over the last probably two years um we're still kind of in the midst of it we're getting ready to open a third office so um that probably by far has been the biggest obstacle for me so when you as you kind of break that down what that challenge of expansion like that would would have been you know the the key you know, new learnings there or skill sets or what you need to think differently about your team? I think the biggest challenge for me is trying to let go of some things. Um, I'm, I'm very OCD and I like to know what's going on with everything from the, you know, just the ownership to the HR, to the managing, to the sales, to the bookkeeping, to the accounting. I mean, you know, I've kind of have done all of it and it really getting to a point of like, okay, um, I can't do it all anymore. So, you know, trying to find the right fit for bringing additional people on, additional, um, you know, roles on and managing separate locations when I can't be in, you know, multiple different places at one time. And so really, I just think that the management aspect of that, of, of growing and having to bring on more people and have more locations has been the, the biggest obstacle for me. And I don't have an answer yet because we're still kind of in the midst of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but everything is figure outable, right? Correct. So, <laughs> I love that. So, so maybe talk, uh, that leads to your team. So talk through how your team has grown the last couple of years, especially obviously with the, you know, adding locations. 
um, you know, some of the key skills on your team. Uh, maybe if there's roles or skills you're looking for. Uh, and... Yeah, so um, we have probably within our staff of 12, over 150 years of insurance experience. So we have quite a few agents that have been just in the industry like me um, a long time. I have, um, there's a, another girl in our office and she started two years before I did. So we've worked together for the past 25, 26 years. I have another agent in the office who started with Sanderson in the very beginning in that first Fairborn office. She moved on, worked in some other agencies, owned her own agency and ultimately came back to Sanderson. So we just have a lot of long-term staff, you know? So um, I think one of the uh, one of the biggest things, I guess, that I'm proud of is that they are just kind of growing with the business. You know, we kind of started as this little office of a few people and we just keep growing. We've got some new agents that are new in the industry that have started just over the last two years. So we have a wide range. Um, I like that they're able to come in and learn from some of these experienced agents and then hopefully that um, develops a career for them, rather that's with us or they can take that and move on to do something else in the industry. So we really have a wide range of experience, but I think um, my biggest pride, I guess, of an owner is the longevity of our employees um, and the, the probably the closeness that we have. Um, we always call ourselves family. We care about each other inside of work and outside of work, but um, then we really have that support for each other as we kind of go through this uh, growth phase and trying to figure things out. So you mentioned, you know, kind of this mix. Of, hey, have you got some kind of longer tenured folks who bring a wealth of experience, but also some newer folks to the industry, you know, in particular in the job market of the last few years where it's been so tight and difficult. How have you been able to win and kind of attracting uh, kind of uh, newer employees to the agency? We really look for employees based on referral as well. Um, when somebody within our team knows of somebody maybe looking for a job that they think would be a good fit, that's who we kind of look for. Um, if I'm looking for somebody, I don't necessarily look for a position. I look for a person. And then I'll train that person to do what I want them to do. Because um, having a, a fit or someone having the attitude that our team has or the teamwork ethic is more important to me, really, than finding somebody that is trained to do something, you know, a particular way. I'd, I'd rather have that team fit and then uh, teach them or have them learn uh, what their position is going to be. So I think that that has been helpful um, as we've grown our teams. We keep that like-minded mindset. So you know, given that approach, right, and I'm, you know, that's what I hear from a lot of business owners now is, hey, you know, find the right person. They may not have the skills yet, but I've got to train them up and grow and develop them. Mm -hmm. So what have you had to put in place within the business uh, to kind of help with that, that more nurturing uh, than maybe what it had done 10, 15 um, years ago? I yeah, I think it's kind of a split of two things. I mean, the industry itself has a lot of education available. So there's a, there's a lot of classes, different carriers. You know, we're an independent agency, so we represent multiple insurance carriers. Um, so all of those carriers will offer training and classes for their own products. There's industry training classes um, throughout the state. So there is a lot of places to turn to for education. Um, there are certifications that can be obtained. So I'm big on having our staff um, whatever kind of direction they're going to go, um, obtaining some of those certifications and additional education. And then, you know, on the backside of that, they're really just able to learn from those tenured agents, from the ones that have been here for a long time and just have bring a lot of experience to the table. They can just shadow within that, um, within that learning environment and be able to just pick up some things that you can't always learn in the classroom. Okay. So it sounds like you're 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 on a, a really solid, strong growth path. You've you know you've added locations, you're adding your third now. What what's your vision down the road? You look three, five years down the road. What do you see for for Sanderson then? Um, I think really just my 
My reasoning for wanting to expand our footprint, um, as I kind of mentioned, and especially this this past year, everybody's been mad at insurance. <laughs> so it's it's been a hard year. Your rates are increasing, <laughs> you, like everything. You else. raised my rates. <laughs> but, yes, they've they've really taken a hit this year. Really, some um, some industry increases that we just haven't seen really since I, I've been in insurance. So it's it's been a hard year, especially for some of those new people. I keep telling them, I promise, it's not always like this. And but. Um, you know, when I started expanding, it really was just to, I guess, reach more people with how we look at insurance. You know, people kind of look at insurance and they're like, I pay for this. I never use it. You know, they just kind of have a, a bad taste for it. And, um, you know, by growing and expanding and hopefully being able to reach more people, we just really want to pass on, you know, what our passion is, which is insurance, which is, you know, funny, but um you know, we've really seen people who aren't protected properly be in some really bad situations and it's it's life altering. And if you've not been in that situation, you don't know that. Um, I'm sure if you're from the Dayton area, the tornado that came through in 2019, sure. which hit Beaver Creek, and that's where our office was at the time. And it was devastating and people didn't have the right coverage and they couldn't rebuild their homes and they couldn't reopen their businesses. And um, businesses had to close and, you know, people were out of their homes and didn't know what they were going to do. So when you see that happen, and it was simply because somebody was just trying to find the cheapest price they could give, or somebody was trying to sell them the cheapest price they could and not truly care about, you know, what the outcome was, if they really needed something. Um, you know, I hate to hear those stories. So, you know, the more that we can educate and reach people and let them know what's available and how they can really protect themselves, that's what's important. And so that's what I'd like to see as we kind of grow and expand our footprint is just being able to put more education out there. Um, I won't say too much because I don't have all the information, but we're working on our own podcast as well, which is just an insurance educational podcast for people. Um, you know, starting new, maybe they're buying their first home, maybe they're going out on their own for their first car, or they have a startup business, and they don't know what they need. So um, really, that's just the biggest thing for me is getting that education out there to people. So those are the things that we're working on over the next couple of years. Okay. Do you see yourself expanding to other locations as well? Um, possibly. I'm not going to talk too loud because if my staff hears me say that, they'll probably all, all run for the hills. <laughs> <laughs> the boss has gone crazy. <laughs> yes, I'm sure they think that often. <laughs> so as you look back now, you're, you know, uh, these years, uh, all the growth and that, what, what have been your keys to success? Especially, you know, a lot of our viewers here, other business owners, especially those who are maybe newer in their journey as an entrepreneur, what uh, what advice would you give them based on your success? Um, I, honestly, I think I I go back. I have that sign in my office for a reason. Um, of everything is figure outable because it's a hundred percent. And so I think that um, when you think you're coming up on that roadblock, well, there's just a different way you have to do it. You just have to figure out something else. You know, it's if, if your goal is to get on the other side of that, how do you get there? And I think often, especially um, new in business or or startups, it can just it, it's a scary feeling when you're like, well, I just don't think I can get there. <clears throat> you know, I'm not real sure how to get there. Um, there's a lot that goes into those early stages. I don't know if you can see this um, sign behind me there. The iceberg. But yeah. Yeah, the iceberg. So underneath the iceberg is risk, failure, doubts, criticism, discipline, sacrifices, rejection, late nights, persistence, hard work, and then the very little tip above the water says success. Okay. So I remind myself of these things. And if somebody was was starting off in business, I would have to tell them like, there's a lot of things to get through before you get to the top side of that. So you just can't lose sight of your vision. Yep, success is just the tip of that iceberg. Huh? Well, yeah, that's, well, that's good. I love that. Love that analogy. So, so for the audience out here, what's maybe and, and as you look through the market that you're in, what's the one thing you wish more people knew about your insurance agency? Well, I think that um, I, I I really feel like there's just that stigmatism around insurance, and so I wish that people 
would understand um, if you need it, you you need it. You're going to want it, you know, and if you never have to use it, well, thank God, you know, so um, I just wish more people would look at it as part of the bigger picture, part of, you know, building your business. If it's a business, part of protecting your family, if, you know, it's, it's your family, if it's your home, if it's your life insurance, if your auto, um, you know, life takes turns all the time. And of course, in this business, we hear the devastating stories all the time. You know, the terrible auto accidents, the house fires, the business fires, you know, the tornadoes that came through. And um, so I, I really just wish people would kind of just maybe view it differently of more of a protection than just a, a pain that, you know, something I have to pay for, I'm never going to get anything out of it. And, um, you know, not always it, it's hard in today's, um, today's world because things are expensive, but really not always look at, you know, what can I get for the cheapest? Because you're probably not getting the right protection if you're just looking for like cheapest bottom dollar, you know, I I, I don't want to pay anything for it. Um, but again, that's hard, you know, when everybody's pockets are tight. So, yeah. but yeah, I just, um, I think that's the biggest thing is just kind of think of it differently and more of a, a protection for your family and your business as, you know, something that you just got to pay for. Yeah. Hey, that, that pain of that, slight increase now is minuscule compared to what that pain would be if you had a catastrophic event, right? right. And you, you weren't covered, right? hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. So you mentioned, Hey, looking at, uh, or starting a podcast. So are there podcasts or, uh, or authors or books that you follow that have helped you uh, stay sharp? Um, not yet. It's definitely a work in progress. I've got, um, I've got the equipment, I've got the ideas, I've got the episodes set up. It's it's figuring out how to put all those things together. <laughs> so that's okay. kind of where we are. So hopefully sometime in the next um, couple of months at the latest, we'll be able to get that out there and um, we can share that. And that, that will hopefully help with education of, um, you know, just different areas of the insurance industry. Okay. So as we look to, to wrap up here today, what, what are the best ways for folks to either connect with you or to follow and connect with Sanderson Insurance? Yeah. Um, so um, obviously our website, which is sandersonagency.com. We are also on Facebook. I mean, everything's just under Sanderson Insurance. We're on Facebook. We're on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. So you can kind of pretty much find us anywhere. Okay. Uh, you'll be more entertained if you follow us on TikTok. <laughs> we like <Okay>. to <laughs> have fun and post some office dances every once in a while. But um, there's information on our website about our carriers that we represent, about our team members, the products that we have. Um, one of the, like I said, one of the biggest things we preach is we're always willing to sit down with anybody and just kind of take a look at their portfolio, either personally or commercially with no strings attached and just kind of guide them on um what are the protections that they should be looking for? Okay. Well, great there. So uh, lots of ways to follow and connect. Folks are going to be running to go check out the, the team dancing on TikTok yeah. <laughs> uh, as, as well. Uh, so as we wrap here today, uh, Deanne, what are you inspired by today? Um, really, I think, you know, uh, on, a, on a business podcast, I'm really inspired by any other business owner. I mean, I know the the long hours and the hard work that it takes, all of these things that are, you know, under that success mountain and, um, you know, anybody who's putting in that effort every day and, and they're trying to do something for themselves and their family and, you know, taking care of other employees or whatever their business might be, it's, it's not easy. So I'm really, anybody who does that um, inspires me. Yep. Yeah, definitely uh, garner all of our respect, right? Uh, there's so yes. much. There's so much below the water that <laughs> folks not in yes. there just don't see, right? <laughs> yes. So I think it, and having something like this is so nice because um, unless you're under that water with somebody else, you know, it's hard to to understand, you know, what each other's going through. But being in that same um, that same world, it's nice to have that support system. So Deanne Fisher, thank you uh, for joining us today and sharing your story, uh, third generation of Sanderson Insurance and you taking it really to you know, next levels and, and multiple new locations. Uh, a lot of great things ahead, I'm sure. 
yes. Yep. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And um, I really appreciate it. All right. And to our viewers, again, I encourage you to go out and, you know, follow uh, Deanne and uh, the uh, Sanderson team really through all those social channels, especially TikTok now, uh, see the, the, the <laughs> dance as well. And again, for our viewers, uh, we encourage you to, to please uh, not only like this episode, but check out some of the others uh, in our series and go ahead and hit the subscribe button. So you'll receive regular updates and messages uh, like the great one you received from Deanne today. So with that, thank you for joining us and hope you all have a terrific day. Great, thank you. Thank you.